Давайте я расскажу на своем языке. А это идет у нас, у нас вообще 5 раз в день. 5 раз в день. Утренчина у нас там на ногах. So besides knowing what to do in a country, knowing what not to do in a country as well is very important. After two years of traveling around Asia, we decided to share with you what not to do in Asia. This video will cover 13 different topics, everything from social norms and traditions, what to avoid, what not to forget, and much more. This will help you travel better, safer, and have less awkward moments on your trip in Asia. Me. <laughs> If you plan on constantly changing the country around Asia, one thing you need to know is that in some countries, the currency are quite weak there and their money can be hard to exchange when you move on to another country. It's better to exchange a small amount of money that you have left over in the country before you leave the country. The reason we say that is because some countries may not accept the currency you are looking to exchange. It happened to us once when we left from Indonesia to Vietnam. We have plenty of the small bills in rupee, which we couldn't exchange it at all in Vietnam. Or when we left Vietnam to Laos, the same thing happened to us. This is why we always try to only withdraw the amount of money we know we are going to use. Another solution to this is also having some USD with you because in case you can't find ATM in the airport, yes, some airport, they don't have ATM there, like for example in El Nido, Philippines. So then you can just exchange the dollars bill that you have or other dominant currency like Euro. Also, some Southeast Asian countries have visa on arrival schemes in place. And most of them, like for example, Vietnam airport, they don't accept other currency when you pay for the visa besides US dollars. In some countries, like Vietnam, there's actually a third-party taxi that looks exactly the same as the regulated taxis. And if you get in one of the unregulated taxis, the result is that the meter may ring up a lot faster than normal. So make sure you don't forget to check the actual name of the company in the country that you're going to so that you know the regulated taxi names prior to arriving there. Also, don't hop in a taxi without asking first if they charge base or meter or not, because some of them will charge you a fixed fare even though they have a meter. So depending on where you go, make sure you don't jump in a taxi right away. So eating street food. Most countries in Asia, especially Southeast Asia, are known for the street food scene. Also, it's very easy to get overwhelmed by hygiene standards here. While we don't normally have a problem with street food and getting sick while traveling, I did have a problem one time while I was in Bali. I got Bali belly, but fortunately, activated charcoal pills help out a lot. It quickly absorbs the toxins that are causing the problem or probiotics which can actually help you recover from this problem yeah, and help improve pressure. digestion and increase natural immunity. I'd highly recommend traveling with probiotics that you don't need to refrigerate because they can bring you back from a very bad situation really quickly and save your entire trip. So next one, we have this issue when we travel to Cambodia, when we travel to remote island of the Philippines, and including in Delhi, India as well. So the problem is that we couldn't withdraw money or use debit card there. Nine, almost all the banks I've used, so all the banks I've used so far have worked with my card, which most of the time they do, but some countries like India, it's like hit or miss, like they would accept it or it wouldn't accept it, or I'd have to use my personal versus the business and it didn't really work too well. Don't forget to call your credit or debit card company before you leave to ensure that you have your card authorized for your foreign destination. This can prevent them from suspecting suspicious activity. Don't forget to do your research on plug and electrical outlet potential in each country that you're visiting. Countries throughout Asia rely on different standards for plug types and outlet configurations. While most countries use plug A, but some of them come with special plug types. For example, Singapore and Malaysia use plug G. Indonesia uses plug C and F. 
while Sri Lanka uses D and M, or Taiwan uses B. Most Asian countries run on 220 slash 240 volts. That means if you're coming from America or another 110 to 120 volt country, your appliances and electronics may not be compatible with the voltage used in Asia. So to be safe, make sure you get a travel adapter. The one that we specifically use is Septix. It comes with two USB plugs, two sockets. It's very handy in helping us save the devices because it comes with surge protectors. So if there's any kind of shortage while you're traveling, it'll ground itself and stop from shorting out the device that you're plugging into it. Also, if you plan to visit multiple countries throughout Asia, Septix is perfect. It comes with 12 different plug sets that cover just about every country. Another great thing, if you've ever had that problem where your adapter is falling out of the wall, you don't have to worry about this with Septix. It's super sturdy, so you can have the cords hanging off the adapter while it's plugged into the wall, and you don't need to worry about it falling out. Don't rely on just Grab or Uber. The reason is because in some countries, Uber is not available anymore. And in some countries, you can get cheaper fare from local ride sharing app. For example, Kakao Taxi in Seoul is way cheaper than taking Uber. Or in Bali, Indonesia, Gojek is way cheaper and is most commonly used compared to the other app. So do your research before you travel to see what kind of transportation is needed in that specific country. So don't rely on just using card, either credit card or debit card. In Asia, card is acceptable almost everywhere, especially if you're traveling to Seoul, South Korea. The card is widely used anywhere, either it be paying for the taxi driver or any restaurants. Thank That's you. so Can cool. Can I have the receipt? Okay, please. Thank you so Thank you. much. Thank you. Thank However, it's mostly cash economy here in Asia, especially in Southeast Asia or South Asia. You will hardly ever pay for anything using your car, especially when it comes to small local restaurants or local taxi. And if payment by car does happen to be accepted at a hotel or for a tour that you book, you will likely be charged around 3% fee on the total price. And you will need to have plenty of small bills too. Mostly things are cheap in Asia, so bills equivalent to $1, $2 or $5 will come in very handy. In some country like Indonesia and Vietnam, don't get confused by the number of zero. As you will notice, the denominations are quite high too, for example, 10,000 Vietnamese dong is less than 50 cents. The best way that we would suggest you is yeah. that always remember the color of each bill instead so then you don't get confused. Because when it comes to the number of zero on the bill, it can get pretty confusing sometimes. We can't stress this enough. Most countries in Asia, especially Southeast Asia, are very conservative places. And keeping in mind local sensitivities and cultural norms may keep you out of trouble. Local traditions in Asia differ from country to country, but some of the common things and practices is unlike the US or most European countries. Whether you can wear shoes in a house, in most of Asian countries, however, feet are widely considered to be dirty and impure, so you have to take off your shoes while entering the house or temples. In some countries like Vietnam or Cambodia, they even avoid talking about their governments. We made the mistake once in Cambodia by asking a local guide about that topic. It was an awkward moment and he said he can't speak about this issue because of the government and the past. Another common thing is PDA is not accepted in a lot of places throughout Asia. There are some extra things that diverse from country to country. For example, while you feed the birds in Thailand, but you can't do that in Singapore. Or while you chew gum in other countries, you can't do that in Singapore. That is so crazy. That gum is illegal to sell in Singapore. Chewing gum is illegal, but you can bring your own gum. But if you get caught throwing it on the ground, oh boy, oh boy, you're gonna get, you're gonna get it. It'll be a how bad day. Is, how much is the fine if I sell gum? <laughs> thousand US, a uh, thousand Singapore, Singaporean dollars if I sell gum. But I'm not gonna be in jail, yeah? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So make sure you don't forget to do your research about the country you're specifically visiting at that time. 
Now, when you speak about getting around Southeast Asia, one of the most common ways to get around Southeast Asia is actually by renting a scooter. Don't forget to take pictures of your scooter from different angles and all the way around it before you sign the contract of renting it. That way you have documentation of all the scratches or the little dings or dents or cracks and no one can claim that you're the one that did it. Also, don't forget to ask for a helmet prior to getting on the scooter and renting the scooter. In most countries, they're obligated to give you a helmet as an extra. Also, make sure you don't forget to actually do some research on the road conditions and what other people say about renting and riding scooters in that specific place. That way, you don't get over your head and you can actually handle the road conditions that you're on. Some of the places like Bali, where the road is very narrow. There are a few to no traffic or red light signs. We would not recommend any beginners to ride a motorbike for themselves in an example country like Vietnam. Well, you can see by yourself why we will not recommend for beginners to rent a motorbike here as well. So airport kiosk should be the last option you consider when it comes to exchanging the money. Exchange rate is poor there and some of them come with high fee. We always withdraw money from ATM right away at the airport first. But be cautious when doing so as well because some debit cards charge out of network transaction fees. So you have to call your bank before your trip to see if your card charge this fee or not. If so, look for the debit card that doesn't. Use your institution apps to find an ATM near you. Try to withdraw a large amount of money if your bank charged the ATM fees. Don't rely on just cheap shopping. Most countries in Asia is well known for being the shopping paradise. It's filled with various different kinds of market, filled with something to suit everyone and every kind of shoppers. It's known to be a destination where you can bargain with the vendors and it's also very cheap here. You would think that just because you have your US or European size knowledge, then shopping will be easier in Asia, then you should think again. There are three main common issues to consider when you want to shop in Asia. First of all, Asian size may come in size standard by country. The most common you will see are sizes from South Korea because they use the simple number system. For example, the size 55 is equivalent to small size in the US. Secondly, size tend to run smaller compared to US or UK size. And lastly, some XL or XXL size may not be available at all in Asia. It might be available in some special market, but it's not something that you can find everywhere. Also, if an item runs in three size or one size, do not buy it if you are a size of four or above in the US. Summary of the body, particularly the chest and the shoulder, may be a bit smaller than you used to. Actually, I encountered the problem of this once when we tried to shop in Seoul, South Korea. Uh, it's so hard for me to buy shoes in South Korea because Korean women has just a small feet. Um, and at that time back then, I'm. At that time back then, I'm still a student, so normally I go for like a thrift store in Korea and I always fail to be able to find the shoes with my size. I am a big girl, so my feet is really huge. My feet, Whoa. my feet guys, I wear like 39 to 40 euro size. 39 to 40 euro size. That's huge. And Korean girls. Typical Korean girl feet is about 30, 35, 36 maximum that I see. Some of my friends has 38. That's it. This seems to be a thing in all of Asia though, especially if you're uh, a Westerner. They may not have the sizes that you're looking for. So just know that if you're a little bit hefty, you might have to uh, pay a little bit more to find that big size you need. Don't go for Grab, Uber or taxi from the airport right away. In some cities or countries like Seoul, Hong Kong, Singapore, Taiwan, Malaysia, Bangkok or Delhi, India, you can easily take metro from the airport train to the city center, which is way cheaper than a taxi and most of the time it's way faster as well because you can avoid the traffic in these major cities. Asia in general and Southeast Asian region specifically alone is home to some of the world's greatest ancient empires and has more than 30 UNESCO listed World Heritage Sites 
and it's full of temples even though you don't plan to visit the temple on that specific day that you are out in town but while roaming around the town what happened to us all the time is that we just randomly see temple along the way so there is a high chance that you will find one along the way so you will soon discover that most of them have a dress code you should obey before entering you usually have to cover up your shoulders and top of your arms as well as down to your knees while temples provide shawls for example to use to cover up with you will be wearing something that thousands of people have also worn as well so bring a sarong with you is some of the good idea that i would highly recommend you will be able to wrap it over your shoulders or around your waist in order to gain the entry so these are 13 essentials from us and if you feel like we've missed anything at all, please let us know in the comments below and we can make sure to add it to the next video. We really hope these tips and tricks are helpful for you on making your next trip the best trip yet. And if you haven't yet, head over to divertliving.com. It'll be linked down below and you can download a whole bunch of free travel essentials depending on the country you're going to. So make sure you subscribe and turn on the bell notification so that every time we upload, you're notified. And we'll see you guys in the next one.